This is a 2010 Dodge Grand Caravan. The complaint is severe scraping noises coming from the rear. This is the driver's side rear and we can see that there's pretty intense gouging on the brake rotor here. So let's go ahead and get this wheel off. You can use a hand wrench or I'm going to use the impact. Our wheel is off. Now you're going to need an 18 millimeter and a 13 millimeter wrench. And Right here is the 13 millimeter that we need to take out. And there's two 18s, one right here and one further down. I'll show you from the back side. Here's that 18 I just showed you up top. Here's the lower 18 millimeter. And then there's the 13 that I showed you first. This 13 here is your parking brake bracket. And now our 18 up top here, once you get them broken loose, they're not that bad. After a while, you might be able to spin it out by hand. There we go. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this off. There we go. Now what to do with this. We can't let it hang from there. Well, some people do, but I don't think it's a good idea. So have a piece of wire handy. There is a little hole right there I noticed, so I'm going to try to use that as a hanging point. And then I'll try to get it through there, like that. Our brake pads are in here. Let's go ahead and get those out. There we go. All right, here's the one. This is what's been gouging. Look, the, the material is gone. This is just the metal back plate and the rivets, and those were just gouging right into this rotor. So at least we found the problem, and we're ready to go ahead and fix it. If you've ever done disc brakes before, then you know that you need to compress the piston on the caliper to make room for the new pads. Well, on these ones, um, it works a little differently. You don't just press it in. These actually need to be rotated clockwise, and they kind of screw back in. And I think that the reason for that has to do with the mechanical emergency brake setup that needs to interface to this. Anyhow, there's a special tool for this, and I guess you can rent it or buy it. Um, this is what it looks like. But, uh, you know, I've got this apart and uh, I need to get it done. So let me see what I can figure out here. Okay, let's go ahead and try to get this rotor off. That was a rubber mallet. Okay, here's the setup. We need to reach in here with a tool and turn that clockwise. So I've bolted this assembly using those two 18 millimeter bolts back up but I have the rotor removed so that we can reach through here. Now, one problem we're going to have is when we're pushing on this, this is going to want to slide on these pins. So what I'm going to do is I've got a regular 4-inch C-clamp, and I'm just going to lightly clamp that right there, just like that. Now, my fancy tool is just a cheap pair of um, needle nose locking pliers, and I have adjusted them to the right width. So I'm going to put them in and get them into those two little grooves. I'm going to push and rotate. And there we go. Seems to work pretty good. I've also got here just a pair of regular needle nose pliers. For the heck of it, let's try those. Well, those seem to work good. So you can see here you've got some options. When you're compressing the piston, you want to keep an eye under the hood at the master cylinder reservoir. Make sure that it doesn't overflow when you're pushing the brake fluid back up into it. According to uh, the manufacturer's instructions, you just want to screw this in until it seats. You do not want to tighten against it. Okay, here's our new parts. Uh, new rotor. These come with grease or oil on them, so that needs to be thoroughly cleaned before installing it. Now here's our AutoZone Duralast Gold 
C-Max brake pads. I used these on the front and they work really well, so I'm going to put them on the back too. Take a look at this. This is a comparison of the old and the new, and that's pretty amazing. So it's no wonder we had issues. The higher end brake pads come with hardware kit, grease, and other things that you would normally have to buy separately. So sometimes it's worth it just to get a kit that has everything. Now, do you remember those clips that came with our brake pads? Those are here, here, and then there's two on the back side also. And you don't always have to replace these. Um, depends on their condition, but if you have them, you might as well. And these basically just help the brake pads mount in snugly. And putting these in usually isn't too much trouble. They just kind of fit in place. And once the new brake pads get involved, then everything stays together real nice. Time to put the brake pad in. These C-Max pads have this little cushion on the back. Um, if your pads don't have that, then you might want to apply some anti-squeal to the back, which you can buy at the auto parts store in little packets. And the idea is this gets inserted up inside the caliper and then these two little ears snap into these little clips we just replaced. This is the back one, the one on the inside. There we go, got the bottom in, now I've got to get the top. Now the outer pad, this goes in using the same idea. And here we go, one new rotor, like so. One caliper loaded with nice new pads. Like so. One 18 millimeter bolt just to get things kind of held together so I can let go of it and get geared up to tighten everything down. Okay, I've got my lower 18 millimeter bolt in place just to kind of hold this together. Now I need to put my upper one in here. This is the emergency brake cable bracket. But remember this 13 down here? We gotta make sure that that's lined up and ready to go in the hole, maybe get it started a little bit so it doesn't move. And then we can go ahead and put our upper 18 millimeter back in there. So now we just need to tighten these three bolts down. All right, if you're gonna to torque these to specification, then this one is 55 foot pounds and the two 18s are 74 foot pounds, which is tight, but not too tight. Well, there we go, that wasn't too bad. We managed to get this done. Even though we didn't have the special tool, everything went okay. Don't forget to remove your wire that the caliper was hanging from. And okay, so we've got everything put back together. I'm gonna pump my brake pedal until it builds up pressure. Now, if you find that your brake pedal is slowly sinking, then it probably has to do with the parking brake adjustment. Remember, we screwed those pistons in until they seated. That means that they need to be adjusted outwards a bit. And you can fix that by cycling your parking brake repeatedly. And when I say repeatedly, I mean a lot. It might take 50 times or 100 times for all the adjustments to take place. So that's it. I hope this video helped you. And uh, be safe.